be me. Playing 3.5 edition. Group of buddies from when I taught pioneering. Going on a campaign that will mostly be outside. Big areas. Mobility is huge. Two of the guys have played with me before. Pick the magic classes before the DM even offers me a choice. Got a knightly paladin. Armored cleric. Weird wizard. Need some non-magical range damage. Guys who have played with me before smiling. He can't fuck that up. Been teaching survival and archery for weeks. Welsh blood flows through my veins. I know what to do. Channel my heritage and historical knowledge. Llewellyn Ap Mealwies. Human fighter crag top archer and his falcon seath. Welsh for arrow. Older retired military vet with a full beard and long hair. Doesn't talk much. Carries a big stick. By big stick I mean item familiar comp as a dragon bone greek bow. All the feats go to range, accuracy, and power. Different arrows for different tasks. Bodkins. Broadheads. Barbed. Make every shot count. Don't give a damn about rate of fire. Work it out with the DM in exchange for more damage and crit chance. Refuses to use spells or magic. The most he will use is his braces, his family bow, and enchanted arrows if necessary. This man can reach out and touch someone at 400 feet without even getting a penalty. Max is out at about 4000. Eat your fucking heart out Legolas. Party says this range is nuts. Even the initial range is BS. Get the longbow. Go to the range. Go behind the range. Keep going. Proceed to lob a few arrows 600 feet. Top historical range is about 1200 feet. 600 was the minimum for practice. Anything shorter you used heavier arrows. Party still says it's BS. Historical archers didn't have braces of greater archery or talking bows larger than them made out of goddamn dragons. Fine. Let me keep him. Nobody else can pronounce his name. Sound like they are coughing up organs. Call him Louie instead. Run some numbers. At max range it would take two turns before the arrow hit the target. I am the artillery. Party gets summoned up by a lord to assist in a massive battle that his army is marching to. Heroes are already somewhat legendary, thus the summons and solid starting levels. Most of the party is honored. Liu is pissed that they summoned him up again after he retired. Has a nice little cabin up in the mountains with his wife. Kids are starting to raise families. Just wants to go home. Set off on our magical adventure. See this almost always in the air. I'm constantly rolling d20s and handing notes back and forth with the DM. Party is confused and worried. Halfway through the second day Louis stops. Pulls his bow string out from under his hood. Strings up his bow. Knocks an arrow and fires it off into nowhere down the trail. Knocks another and does it again. Party freaks out and get ready. Nothing happens for 5 rounds. Louis just stands there. Then he starts shooting again. 13 rounds later the remnants of a patrol reach us. Party kills all 15 soldiers pretty quick. Party looks back at the archer nervously and continue down the trail. Another 15 men laying dead in the dirt, spaced out every 120 feet except for a stretch of about 700 feet. Two were near each other just under half a mile away. Cleric asks what in the name of the gods just happened. Louis calmly explained the situation. Seath spotted the 30 man patrol half a mile away. Liu fired and the shot hit one the next round. Captain told the men to form up and move forward. He got hit the turn after that. Troops weren't stupid. Broke formation and started to zigzag while sprinting. Held fire for 5 turns until they got within a third of a mile when the arrows took less than a turn to travel and Liu didn't need to guess where they were running. Didn't want to risk wasting any arrows. Cleric's face when. Party is now visibly terrified of the archer. As expected Louis doesn't fight normal. Rather than prancing around the encounter firing arrows all over the place like a homosexual elven watcher that wanted to grow up and be a ballerina, he prefers to fight the traditional way. Whenever the fight starts he stops wherever he happens to be, picks out the arrow he wants, knocks it, and gives some poor bastard a third eye socket. Repeats this process every turn until he runs out of things to shoot. Flat out refuses to move unless absolutely necessary, even if the fight starts carrying on down the street, into another block, out of town, and then cascades out into the countryside. 
As long as the fight is less than a third of a mile away, someone is going to grow a 3 foot long branch out of the side of their head every round. Any farther than that and it just takes another turn or two to get there. Have to guess what square people are going to be in the next turn. It's like playing battleship with a railgun. Gods help anyone if he's on higher ground. He gets a damage and accuracy bonus for that too. Seethe makes sure that he can see absolutely everything all the time. Feats let him ignore cover. The arrows just punch straight through whatever is in the way. Regular arrows are pinning people to trees and knocking them off their feet. Party shits a brick whenever he pulls out the magic arrows. Explosive arrows turn him into a mortar. Splitters hit twice. Seekers turn him into a heat seeking ballista of pain. There is no escape. Finally make it to the army after multiple sidetracks and encounters that followed the usual theme. Enemy army is across a field. Break out the big formations rules. Louis takes control of all the archers. Leaves his normal arrows back at the supply train. Just wants to get this over with. Takes them all over to a hill. Has them start cutting trees. The next day there is a wooden tower. Light wooden wall. And a crap load of stakes in the ground. He won't budge. Rest of the army forms up and gets ready. Evil champion rides out to meet with the paladin. Typical heavy dark armor. Extremely loud and full of himself. Has to yell everything. Demands to go up against our greatest fighter. Llewellyn was a very little man and that was a very poor choice of words. One round later a phasing arrow goes flying past the paladin. Ignores the champion's armor. And turns him into a new kind of unicorn. Enemy army charges. Llewellyn goes up in his tower and starts blasting captains and commanders into another plane of existence. All the archers volley firing at wherever his shots land, after they get in range of course. Enemy army going toe to toe with us. Every turn or so a captain explodes and his unit gets hammered with hundreds of arrows. Paladin and cleric are buffing everyone into the stratosphere as they turn the front lines into a blender of holy fury. Wizard is just chucking random spells around. In other news enemy moral is at an all time low, starting to break when they unleash their secret weapon. Golems. Full regiment of golems. Fuuuuuu. Louis starts lobbing adamantine arrows into them. Can only hit one at a time. Wizard starts transmuting en masse to mud and anything else to slow down the rape train. Explosive arrows into the muck doing pretty good but we can't stop it. Cleric and Paladin find some loophole in the programming involving something holy. Cause a mass case of berserk. Golems are going nuts destroying absolutely everything including each other. Both armies are getting the hell away. Few turns of staying a safe distance away and blasting the ones that get too close to Fort Bowman. Get it back under control. Enemy army rooting. Need to get the Dark Lord or he will be back. He's somewhere out there. Seethe sees a black suit of armor a mile away. Get out one of the magic flight arrows of distance to boost his range out to a mile. Almost max range, minus 18 to hit penalty, arrow needs to fly for 2 turns. Cleric and Paladin both throwing blessings and prayers like crazy. Wizard cast some spell I can't remember and patted Louie on the back. Buffs and ups to hit cancel out the penalty, still need to predict the movements of a frightened lord on horseback 2 turns in advance. Remember he's frightened, needs to move max distance away from us every turn, calm as always. Whole army prepares for the longest 12 seconds of their lives. Knocks an arrow. Adjusts for distance. Fires. While the world holds its breath, Llewellyn turns around, de-strings his bow, and starts going home. Didn't miss a shot the whole campaign. Seriously, Felix's stuff is fucking eight star. I haven't done any of his stories in a wee while. I'm trying to like see for them a wee bit. But like, if you haven't got the chance, try the other ones out or go on to his uh, page and read out like just read his stuff it's really worth the deep dive i really enjoy it and i've only got a few left that i haven't done yet and the only reason why i haven't done them is because they're very very short you know so i might compile them into one bigger video you know i think they're a lot of fun definitely something that i would recommend anyway i love them and i love all his characters like even this fucking welsh historically accurate fucking longbowman is quality i fucking love this shit well historically accurate in heavy quotation marks you know but uh, he's got so many great characters like you know that fat monk clark the fucking moray gunners and all that jazz it really is 
if you haven't got the chance to check them out um i love this type of shit and i'm sure that's why you guys are here too you know so anyway look i hope the boys enjoyed as always links down below and um, subscribe and all that other good shit and i'll see you in the next video